Hello friends, this week's devotion is titled John 3.16. I love when God shows me a scripture in a fresh way, especially as it pertains to my life or someone close to me. And that's what happened recently with this foundational gospel scripture, John 3.16. I'd been driving all night from out of state, returning home after a family emergency. When I pulled into my garage and picked up my phone to drop it in my purse, the time on the phone was 3.16 a.m. It brought me comfort because I knew Holy Spirit was reminding me of his simple and profound message of salvation for my father, who had met him face to face just two mornings earlier. The Amplified Classic version of John 3.16 says, For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave up his only begotten and unique Son, so that whoever believes in, trusts in, clings to, relies on him, shall not perish or come to destruction or be lost, but have eternal everlasting life. The Passion Translation study notes say of this verse, True faith has a number of components, acceptance, embracing something or someone as truth, union with God and his word, and an inner confidence that God alone is enough. The NIV study notes say, the theme of the summary of the gospel is God's love made manifest in an infinitely glorious manner. The word love expressed in John 3.16 is the Greek word agapeo, which means unconditional love, love by choice, and by an act of the will. It denotes unconquerable benevolence and undefeatable goodwill. It will never seek anything but the highest good for fellow mankind. It is a word that exclusively belongs to the Christian community. It is a love virtually unknown to writers outside the New Testament. So this is the level to which God loves us, unconditional, unconquerable, and undefeatable. For me that morning, it was important to God's heart that I know I was loved and not alone, and that his love was and is enough for me. In the early darkness, I clung to this truth. Likewise, in this new season, I believe God's beloved will experience new moments in which he will express his love for us uniquely. I believe it will be heightened and highlighted as he walks us through big shifts so we'll come to know him once again, as our more than enough. It may happen during times of pain or loss, such as in my case, or it may happen during times when God adds to our lives. But at all times, it is gain as we give thanks, because as we know, he himself as love is with us. When I consider all that he has done for me, how can I not celebrate him How can I not praise him for giving my family the gift of 29 extra years with my earthly father when medical experts at one of the top universities in America said it couldn't and wouldn't happen? When I begin to thank him for my father's life on earth and what he has done to make a way for him to enter into heaven and for me to see him again as a treasure stored up for me, it is more than I can contain. When I consider what God has done for me, all I experience is overwhelming gratitude and joy unspeakable, literally every single time. It hits me like a rushing wave that makes me want to fall to my face before him. It lifts me like nothing else and makes me pick up my gait in my race toward God even more. And I want everyone who has lost someone to know this kind of joy unspeakable that is life-giving and life-sustaining. A short time after that morning, Holy Spirit highlighted an affirming scripture. It was 2 Timothy 4, verse 17. The Amplified Classic Version says, But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me, so that through me the gospel message might be fully proclaimed, and all the Gentiles might hear it so I was delivered out of the jaws of the lion. So I am here to testify that no matter what storm rolls in, God sees and knows and is there to deliver us from death into his glorious light. 
This is for those living in Christ here and beyond. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. As we process through mega shifts in this new wine era, we must remember this simple gospel and know by his word and spirit that we are loved. When God removes people from our lives and the voice of the enemy comes to lie to us, we must trust in, cling to, and rely on God's true gospel of John 3.16. To God be the glory.